Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here. Friends, first off, I want to thank all our members and Patreons for supporting the channel so far. As I mentioned in my previous video, uh, we are no longer going to uh, ask for members or Patreons. So if you are a member or a Patreon, please discontinue your subscription. Uh, I'll produce video as and when information is available. And uh, we will not be making Hindi videos because it's very time consuming and difficult for me to do so. Uh, so any request for Hindi videos is going to be ignored. So let me make that clear. Having said that, today I want to give you much more hope because I want to give you an idea of how HIV compares with other similar conditions in which many people are living. Uh, in some cases, more people are living in those conditions than with HIV. And the idea is to provide you a comparison so that you can appreciate that things can be better and things are much better for people with HIV in comparison. Everything is relative. Uh, the first thing I would say is that I hope nobody gets HIV, but if you did get HIV, then the comparison will give you an idea that things are not too bad after all. With that said, let's get started. Welcome back friends. As soon as the diagnosis of HIV is received, I think uh, the first reaction is fear and despondency, anger, uh, sense of injustice, uh, sense of desperation, um, uh, and very, very strong emotions. And I think one of the reasons why it happens is because when HIV started, people did not know what HIV was, and it easily progressed to AIDS, and people died of AIDS. And there was a period of time when people were afraid of this mysterious disease and its fatality, and as a result of which the fear factor got ingrained into us for generations. But it's not quite the same with diabetes. Diabetes has been around for a while and uh, we don't find the same kind of fear factor in diabetes. There are people with diabetes who do not worry too much about their diet. Uh, there are people with diabetes who manage their lifestyle and continue to live a satisfactory life. Uh, and there is not that much of a uh, concern or a problem that we see with HIV. Um, but if you were to look at people with predisposition uh, to diseases like, for example, Huntington's, ALS or Parkinson's, which are all genetic diseases, along with type 1 diabetes, uh, you will see that they are in a different boat altogether. For context, Huntington's is genetic and it's caused by a mutation in the HTT gene leading to an abnormal form of Huntington protein. And this leads to progressive symptoms like jerking movements. So you would have seen people with Huntington's uh, and uh, they would not be in control of their body because their body will involuntarily move without them wanting to do it. And then there is also the cognitive decline and there are psychiatric issues uh, that happen in Huntington's disease, which is a progressive and ultimately fatal condition. It typically progresses through several stages leading to severe impairment and eventually death. The disease usually results in a gradual decline in physical and cognitive functions over a period of 15 to 20 years or slightly more, but that's, that's how Huntington ends. There is also ALS on the other hand, which mainly affects motor function leading to muscle weakness, atrophy and eventually paralysis. Cognitive function is usually spared, though some individuals may experience frontotemporal dementia. ALS is a progressive neurodegenerative disease that affects motor neurons, leading to muscle weakness, atrophy, and eventual paralysis. The progression and outcomes of ALS can vary from person to person, and ALS often leads to death within two to five years after diagnosis, primarily due to respiratory failure. However, some people uh, may live longer, particularly with advances in supportive care. And then we have Parkinson's disease, which is a progressive neurological disorder, primarily affecting uh, movement control. And it is characterized by the gradual degeneration of dopamine producing neurons in the brain, particularly in the substantia nigra, which plays a crucial role in regulating movement. Parkinson's disease itself is not totally fa typically fatal. Rather, it is the complication arising from severe motor impairment, such as difficulty swallowing, leading to aspiration, pneumonia, or other related issues that can contribute to a reduced life expectancy. Then there is diabetes, both type 1 diabetes, which is genetic, and type 2 diabetes, which is lifestyle related. Diabetes, diabetes causes a lot of complication and suffering and three times as many people suffer type 2 diabetes as compared to HIV. And in diabetes, 
what happens is that because of the inability to control the level of sugar in the body a person may faint because of lack of sugar or they may have too much sugar in their body and all of this has an impact on very vital organs like heart eyes uh, and kidneys and there is multiple organ failure is possible and people end up uh, suffering a lot before they die when they have type 2 diabetes if they do not control their lifestyle and if they do not take their medications on an ongoing basis in order to keep it under control so these are all the things that i am comparing hiv to so now i'm going to put a chart out here or a table out here uh, just to summarize what i have said so far so as you can see here around 38 million people suffer from hiv globally now we have not given it as 2 to 3 per 100000 because it's not a genetic disorder with a genetic disorder you can quantify the probability but hiv aids is acquired and 38 million suffer globally and the incidence is 1.5 million new cases per year and near normal life expectancy with effective art so it's not as bad as if you look at als it is 2 to 5 years after diagnosis that's all the lifespan that a person has after diagnosis it is 2 to 3 per 100000 globally and 5000 new cases per year in the us alone and if you look at huntington's disease it is 3 to 7 per 1000 uh, per 100000 in certain populations and approximately 1 in 10000 births will have huntington's disease and 15 to 20 years is the average uh, life, uh, life expectancy after the symptom starts manifesting. So there is a definite cap to the life expectancy if you compare ALS and Huntington's disease to HIV. In HIV, you have got a near normal life with effective ART. Parkinson's disease is up approximately 1 to 2 per 1000 globally, which is a higher incidence and 60,000 new cases per year in US alone. And it's often close to general population in terms of life expectancy, unless there is some incident that happens because your ability to swallow is compromised due to the disease or your ability to breathe is compromised due to the disease, then it could be much earlier. And then we have type 1 diabetes, which is genetic, and it's approximately 1.1 million in the US, which is 0.1% of the population, and 20,000 cases every year. And this is near normal with insulin ma management. If insulin is not taken on a timely basis, then the patient would have problems, uh, which could probably lead to fatality over a period of time. Then type 2 diabetes, which is basically lifestyle-based because of obesity and other things, stress-related issues. 9.3% uh, of adults uh, worldwide suffer from type 2 diabetes. 463 million approximately globally suffer from type 2 diabetes, 2 million new cases per year. And you have near normal life with management and risk of complications. Now, the reason why I'm comparing HIV uh, to type 1 and type 2 diabetes is because in both the cases, you have near normal life expectancy with medication. And you will find that diabetes patients are not uh, as despondent or as desperate uh, in their outlook as some HIV patients that we see in our comment section where they are lamenting about their life and other things. So I'm thinking that if you look at how HIV compares to type 1 and type 2 diabetes and how it compares to ALS, Huntington's and Parkinson's where ALS has got a 2 to 5 year lifespan after diagnosis. That's a very short period of time uh, to be. And Huntington's has got 15 to 20 years progressive uh, decline after symptoms have begun appearing. Uh, so that's slow torture, right? So compared to all of those things, if a HIV patient had uh, ART on a regular basis and if any side effects come, you go to the doctor and change the ART combination uh, until you get a combination which suits you and which doesn't have much of side effects, you'll have near normal life expectancy just like type 1 diabetes or type 2 diabetes people. And that, I think, uh, is the kind of comparison that you have to look at and take inspiration from. That's what I think HIV patients can learn from the diabetes patients. I'm saying this, uh, it's coming from a good place. Um, I just want to give you inspiration that people who are having similar conditions, uh, which requires them to take medicine on a daily basis, uh, are having a much better uh, outlook towards life as compared to people who are having HIV 
when I'm saying people are having HIV, I'm not tarring everybody with the same brush. I have seen in our own uh, uh, shared track community, people who are suffering from HIV, there are many who are very optimistic, who are going ahead with their careers and who are very positive when they look at all the research that is happening. And I would, I would like to think that uh, both HIV as well as diabetes, both are reaching a stage where the research is almost ready to come up with a cure uh, which can take care of um, the, uh, the treatment um, instead of being a daily factor, being once in six months or once and done kind of uh, situation. So there is a lot of hope out there. So friends, stay confident and stay optimistic and stay happy. The fact that uh, we are discontinuing uh, membership and Patreon uh, should not make you feel that I'm not going to make videos. I'll continue making videos. The only reason when I'm, why I'm stopping uh, members and Patreons is that you end up spending money and I'm unable to use the money for the purpose that I'm collecting because it's not enough and I don't see any in the foreseeable future that will connect enough money so that I can have staff out here to do HIV videos and that's the reason why I have discontinued it but the dedication to this cause is going to remain as it was before so stay engaged stay subscribed watch the video please comment and stay very, very motivated. Help is around the corner. Thanks and have a great day. Bye for now.